Okay. Uh, good day, everybody, and welcome to our Blockchain Community Day. We hope you will re uh, really enjoy the program prepared for this event. And it's my pleasure and honestly honored to introduce you our guest, my IPAM colleague, technology and solution architect with more than 20 years of software engineering experience, Satish Dishpande. Besides of this, Satish is truly passionate with Web 3.0 and Kritos as well. So before we get started, I have a few small announcements. We are going to record this session and we are going to have a NFT giveaway. So the rest info about this giveaway you will find in your email box right after this presentation. And one more thing before we uh, dive deep into the topic. So guys, feel free to ask your questions using our chat, a Q and a section right on the um, uh, section right on the left of your screen. So Satish, the audience is yours. Please start your presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Satish Deshpande. Uh, I, I, am, I work in APAM London as a senior delivery manager. I also work as a solution architect for a couple of assignments. So I have, as you see, I have a delivery and technical expertise and uh, Web 3.0, not only Web 3.0, generally um, blockchain is one of my a recent uh, interest and quite passionate about learning about the blockchain technology. That's when I started a few months ago my journey and uh, I thought I will share my Web3.0 experience so far. And um, there are a couple of other sessions scheduled today and this week overall you will hear and know about blockchain technologies a lot more in depth and uh, you will have different tech the scope of the understanding the scope of a topic is also really really wide varied uh, varied in terms of um, the, the skills you uh, learn and the skills you can apply after learning the thing so here i am today going to talk about web 3.0 popularly known as web 3 it's a most of you know it's a next generation web technology. Before I would even begin, I just want to understand uh, how many of you are aware of Web 3.0? Uh, how many of you are either using it or developing it or are helping someone to deploy? Or any of this understanding you have about Web 3.0, I want to understand. Uh, Dennis, so, uh, are they, they can, you can share your um, yes or no answer in the chat room so that what I, how I will use this information is if it is, there are more, I can go really in depth, start with intermediate content in the day, uh, presentation. If it is some of you want to understand the basics, then we will go with the basics. So that's where this question and your answer help me. So will you be able to share your uh, uh, answer in the chat room, whether you know Web 3.0, you heard Web 3.0, or you never, or you don't know, or you want to know from the basics. Will you be able to give us this info? Thank you. I'll just wait for one minute. Cheese and Satish, as I can yeah. see, a mm. lot of people have no idea regarding, probably not have no idea, but have mm. very little understanding little regarding. That's yeah, regarding. fantastic. Yes, yeah, so it would be great if you start with the basics. Fantastic, yeah. yes. 
Okay, that's a good info. Thank you guys. Okay, as when I say Web 3.0 is the next generation web technology, at end of this session, you will know why, how Web 3.0 is going to change the world. Okay, how Web 3.0 is going to give leverage users as you and me a uh, different aspect. It, it's for the re, literally a different uh, scale of uh, uh, individuality or um, the okay, we'll understand. So, as part of this presentation, I'll be talking about an introduction of Web 3.0, and I'll, then I will talk about the concepts of uh, Web 3.0. Concepts is one of the key part because this concept changed entire in it's going to change the entire industry and 3.0 concepts are very very important if you understand these and upcoming sessions in today's and next few days you will be able to get more information from these sessions actually so give more attention on the concepts i'll talk about web 3.0 examples currently being built up and available to see and feel and use many of these services and we have uh, then we will go through advantages or cons of web 3.0 and we will understand pros also because anything comes with a great benefit will have some kind of a trouble also it associated and uh, it's a kind of a baggage we carry and pros also we will go over okay without further ado let's start with the introduction of web 3.0 it's Web 3.0 is all of a sudden something new? No, it's not. We started this journey in, I think mostly when we were in the school, actually, even I was. So Web 3.0, Web 1.0, it started somewhere in 1989. And um, it Web 3.0 remained until 2004 or five, somewhere between 2004 and five. What is Web 1.0? Web 1.0, if you have seen at least some seniors in the group would have seen actually, it's some more stuff, more or less HTML pages or sometime a CSS also embedded just to have the formatting and all, but there was not much of a JavaScript and all that used. That's a technology. Okay, when it comes to, when I say it's a static, so this is a, uh, Web 1.0, a platform where you were able to see kind of um, a very, very read only text. Okay. You don't have any actions. You can't uh, give a feedback on the website or you can't do much activities except reading the content, consuming the content. Okay. Understanding the content. Uh, I, I still remember actually when I was uh, studying engineering and there was a, a guy who was working in one of the uh, organization called in India, it's a CDAC. So he was mentioning, okay, they are working on converting entire library into a text. Okay, so that this library is online available to us. When I heard this, someone saying, okay how they can convert entire library into text so that time it was a quite surprising very very much interesting point for me how exactly anyone can sit and do this we didn't even know scanning at that time we had no idea because we were a student and uh, yes there is a lot of work done to move this content into a static form okay that and all hard work is done in web 1.0 phase actually but unfortunately, it is a read only. As human being, we evolved from stage to stage. We wanted to bring in, okay, now static pages are good enough, but we want to have some kind of a dynamism introduced into this so that user can click, something happens, user can respond to the question the web page is asking. So there were so many thought process started growing on. And towards the beginning of 2005, IT was introduced to a new concept called Web 2.0. Web 2.0 uh, fulfilled most of the human need, what we wanted to see in the web, web pages. We wanted to have a dynamic dynamics in the web pages. 
we want to have an interaction we want to have some kind of a communication and we want also wanted to have some kind of artificial intelligence uh, introduced to us based on what we use what we surf what we browse you know unfortunately what happened is yes we have these big companies which started providing web 2.0 so google facebook amazon you name them most of these fang and non fang big companies they started providing these web pages very very dynamic interactive okay that's very good that's what we wanted but without knowing or without knowing to the user or with some confirmation from user these software or network giants started collating our own personal data in one or other way okay so obviously they were helping the user base to understand what they serve and give the the prescription or the the suggestion about okay if if for example if i am searching for the books next time when i open google it will give me the advertisement of something about the books what i was searching for or there are some options and this thing that was very good actually we wanted to have that kind of information but where you went what you did which restaurant you had been with which friend you were with okay your family members that kind of a data also these systems started recording actually sorry hi hi sorry hi yeah okay can, can you just move on your slide also in the meantime the audience are, i think are not able to see that uh we are still in the slide number 1 ah yes i am still in yeah. slide number 1 yeah oh, okay, so okay. this one web 2.0 yes i think i'll point out to the Yes. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. So, we started saying, but the centralized uh, network chains, the name fewly, a few I named them. They started capturing this information. So, we want a dynamics, we want these website to be interactive, these we want these website to be uh, smart enough, but we don't want these websites websites to store our personal data store our friends data store our uh, travel information where i went which which restaurant had been yesterday or today morning what i ate what i think most of this information it started uh, recording so we wanted to have a break on this and when i say break on the centralized network giants into decentralized okay so that's when web 3.0 start the concept started uh, working out actually when i say web 2.0 in general terms you can remember in these website we can read we can write we can upload also youtube facebook are a very popular example where you can upload your videos where you can you can upload your text your linkedin and others actually so that is true but we wanted to break this centralized network giant into the decentralized that's when web 3.0 concept was introduced sometime in it started actually uh, web 2.0 i would say uh, the duration of web 2.0 is uh, from 2005 until now even now we are very much in web 2.0 world but going forward we will move to web 3.0 zero which is a fully a blockchain technology uh websites what we are going to develop i'll give a little bit introduction about blockchain in my next slide and we are primarily going from centralized to decentralized network okay what is that is so we won't be having all our data in one company database a one company data center one company cloud instead we all as an individual we will have our own content we'll own our own uh, uh, website and we we will have our own network a nodes where we store our information and this will be cross referred with other nodes for example if you imagine you have a five friends and you develop you want to develop something all this 
five of you will have a, some set of data stored in your own nodes. And when a website is hosted, all this website will get the information from all the five nodes instead of banking only on one particular node of one of your friend. So there is a kind of ownership is getting shared when we start using Web 3.0 uh, uh, application. Is these centralized network chains who are recording our data, are they willing to lose what they have built in last 10 years that easily, 10, sorry, 10, 15, 20 years, are they willing to lose with this decentralized uh, uh, approach? Yes, they are going to lose some of the control, whatever they have, plus they also have no option to migrate to web 3.0 because most of the sites when it start migrating into 3.0 world obviously these gens has to slowly come into this uh, stream and very much they know they are going to lose some kind of ownership or some kind of a privilege they have as a, uh, as a centrally owning our data. So they won't be able to record our personal data and how and what I'll explain, how exactly Web 3.0 work. Okay, that's about a basic introduction of Web 3.0. Also, sometime it is called Web 3, okay? So it started with Web 1.0 and it started with, then we were, we are in currently in Web 2.0 and we are going to be into the Web 3.0 era very soon we are partially there started but yes we will be very soon okay after this i want to talk about web 3.0 key concepts okay and just wanted to write a bit about web 3 uh, i just wanted if there are some newbies like you you should understand what exactly web 3.0 Web3 or Web3.0 is the next generation of internet. It heavily relies on blockchain technologies, open source model, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. It aims to create decentralized internet. Decentralized is a key uh, here. Decentralized internet, uh, internet with the open, connected, intelligent websites and web applications. How this is possible is we have uh, three fundamental concepts used here. One is decentralized, D for, it is actually called DOB concept. If you see DOB, it's not data work, it's a decentralization open source blockchain. Okay, what is decentralized? I just explained high level. In decentralized, um, decentralized, platform hosting, individually, individually, every one of us will be hosting our own information in the, our own specified nodes, okay? And when the website is working, the website will get the information from all these nodes, instead going into one centralized node, getting all this information, what is happening currently in web 2.0. And, and this ownership is very specifically with the one company currently in web 2.0. In web 3.0, it is going to be open source. Anyone can contribute, anyone can create their own node, anyone can host their data into this system, okay? And make it open to the community, okay? So it started using, uh, a website will start using this open source model. And blockchain is a game changer actually. If you want to understand blockchain, it's very easy. Split this blockchain into two pieces, a word. When I say block and chain, okay? So how data is stored in a blockchain is, it's a, it, a, each and every data entity will be stored in one block. You can imagine there is a box, okay? In that box, we keep a data and uh, this data is very, very persistent. You can't modify this data. Why is it use the hash technology and when your data goes in, it creates a hash uh, key for this data. And it also create a hash key for the data 
which this block is going to refer. Okay. Their technology is actually used using hash technologies. Yes, you, you can refer to the next block and you store the data and next block will store the data and it will refer to the next block. It goes on like that. It just to create a chain. Okay. So what happens? Advantage of this is if you try to modify if we don't want to modify blockchain data. If anyone try to update this data, what happens is each update will bring in a new hash code. Okay. When this hash code is generated, it loses the track, it shows a link to the next block. Okay. Hence, entire block of data will become unused. So this is the security mechanism actually, how it is going to be protected. And most of the blockchain um, technology uh, uh, usage, you will hear more, but Bitcoin and other uh, coins, whatever we hear is heavily used blockchain uh, technology because they have to be persistent. They have to be untampered. They have to be spoof proof actually, because no one can, you know, play around with this technology. And Web 3.0 uses these brilliant key concept to build the website. You can imagine how futuristic it's going to be. Okay. Now let's talk about. There are multiple examples. I just took few of my own favorite. Okay. So uh, what are the examples of Web 3.0? applications currently which you can see okay apple siri is one of the example you can i think most of you are must be using it this is one of the techno uh, the web 3.0 application it it helps you to pro give you a step by step instructions okay what to do how to do and others and next one is uh, all form alpha uh, this is a platform which provides uh, uh, educational it's the educational platform however it uses heavily uses in fact ai artificial intelligence and machine learning concept to make this education really effective and useful okay i'm here full form alpha okay so heavily uses ai and ml and in terms in internally it is a blockchain uh, uh, compliance website so you can see it it's one of the best example even if you want to go through and the next one is facebook uh, now meta so they are leaders in metaverse actually most of their applications are coming in web 3.0 and um, as you know they they are experimenting a lot with metaverse they have their own decentralized land they have their own avatars and they are they are they are going to be a game changer in coming years is is the expectation and not to forget even microsoft and google are also very much on the same lead actually they might come out they are working on some of the products which we will see in coming years okay and next example is uh, file coin it's a uh, uh, Hi, Satish. Sorry to, Hi. sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Are we still yeah. on the slide one? Just want to check. No, I mean examples of Web 3.0. Can you see okay. that? Okay. Slide is not moving. Maybe we can you reshare that again so that maybe there's some okay. issue. Can, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, oh, thank you. No problem. Okay. The, this one also you didn't see. I mean, Web 3.0. No, I'm, no. Still oh. showing slide one. And maybe you can put also the presenter mode, speaker mode, so that, yeah, it's, it's visible. In case you want to reshare that, yeah, it is. Thank you. Okay. Not sure why it is. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you want to reshare that. Stop sharing. Yeah, so share. yeah correct. Stop sharing and reshare. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I missed then the second slide actually. Uh, so... oh. oh, God. 
just I don't know whether this oh it gone to extend mode that's very bad okay great yes yeah, so, uh, yes thank you uh, sorry I think it went to the screenshot mode automatically I don't know so um, yes I was talking about web 3.0 key concept and I talked about DOB data you know uh, decentralization open source and blockchain i gave a little bit of example of each of them and now i'm in page three okay and talking about examples of web 3.0 apple siri we spoke all form alpha it's a ai and ml learning website for education uh, specifically and we spoke about facebook a leader in metaverse world and they have uh, they are really leading in terms of creating a decentralized land and you know like avatars and they, they have a lot of new news every week they, they are they are releasing and surely one of the big company leading in metaverse world actually and i was talking about filecoin filecoin is next step to cloud actually cloud uh, dropbox or uh, google drive or uh, you use many of these uh, drives to store your data actually so these all are web 2.0 applications however filecoin is it's a classic example of web 3.0 it used the the uh, the blockchain technology and very uh, convenient and ownership of the files are also very easily are uh, managed okay i would say like that so just to keep this life simple and the third one is a brave browser uh, it's it's a new secure access uh, platform uh, to internet or the mobile platforms mobile uh, users so brave browser is one of the example and which is also built in web 3.0 technology i mean web 3.0 concept and uses the all these three dob uh, concept very much decentralized open source and blockchain okay so these are a few of the examples which i really wanted to tell and share with you and now i'm going to next the slide you can see pros of web 3.0 okay our advantages of web 3.0 i spoke about a couple of a concept here and there now you will understand these points how exactly they become advantage for us as a user okay so the first one is anonymous and single sign-on okay so when you go to any website that's a g uh, google a gmail or yahoo or whatever so when you go you are supposed to create a user id and you have to register to that particular site and you have to fill in all your personal data there okay only then you will start using these services that website services individually for example yahoo you have to register start using gmail you have to register start using facebook you have to start register using linkedin and others 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 if you remember you have so many user registration you have done and you have to remember the username password of all these systems in web 2.0 however in web 3.0 you don't need to remember all the site registration happens anonymously and it will have a single sign on that what, what that means is when you log into one website first time into web 3.0 website okay you just need to give basic information and this basic information itself will be used for accessing all other consecutive web 3.0 applications you don't need to do the re-registration of uh, uh you, you yourself into different different website you visit you don't need to have a 10 username 10 passwords to remember okay instead one username one password will make you sure you will log in into all these platforms literally seamlessly 
Okay, that's the first advantage. That makes our life so easy because I remember some of my friends and all the, at least few years ago, they were creating an Excel file and storing this username, password information in Excel and they used to protect that Excel. So now we don't need to do that because most of the things happen anonymously and based on the single sign-on concept. Okay, that's the first and form, very, very best advantage I see as a Web 3.0 user. And the, the second one is you start owning your own data. Okay, because there is no centralized giants, companies who are storing your data. Instead, you are storing your own data in the nodes, whatever you want to. And you can give access to that node based on the trust whatever you have with the uh, uh, nodes or other users uh, interchangeably okay so this this makes your data is owned by you you manage your data you will have a full control who will or who can and yourself put your own rules accordingly okay and most of this uh... oh god are you able to hear me yeah uh, no it's okay right now no we lost in between but it's good now yeah oh uh, no okay so you can see my pro i mean advantages of web 3.0 page okay i'm talking about third point transparency sorry internet so transparency of a data because uh, you own your own data and you have full control of a data who exactly can see your data who exactly don't want to see your data or you yourself want to be visible enough in the web 3.0 also you can control you can be totally anonymous in the network you can give whatever the information you want Okay, for example, if my name is Satish Deshpande, I can register as SAT, okay, SAT, just first three character and go on using all the web 3.0. My identity won't be exposed or shared with anyone else in the web 3.0. Okay, that becomes one of the most benefit I know it can be used in wrong ways also. I have some disadvantages I'll be discussing, but this is, we have to consider this as one of the benefits who are genuine and uh, safe users, I would say, okay? And uh, next advantage is personalized web experience. When I say personalized web, web experience, you don't need to, depends on third party ai and ml applications to show the advertise you want to have your own comfort zone your own uh, sales information coming on your page your own your you liked web marketing or digital marketing is happening through your pages you can make it enable or disable you are a owner of it you want to see something keep it you don't want to see something disable it it gives that a freedom for the users to have this uh, experience. So that's when that sort it is called as personalized web experience. And then the next point is um, it gives literally uninterrupted service because there's no downtime. These giants will take their own maintenance and sometimes they go for unscheduled outages or something, something. There, there, is, there are a lot of ways where we will have interruption in the, the, the website usage, okay? That won't be there anywhere in 3.0 because it's handled by your own data entities or your friends or your known trusted users or trusted partners. So they will have uninterrupted service available to uh, you. And also uh, UI, your UI, when you save, the, when you log into a specific site, 
user interface what you see and what e-commerce want to sell is mostly the information which you would like to see which you want to uh, click and go to these sites and do some kind of a browsing or shopping or marketing or sales or knowledge uh, enhancement all these have things happens based on your wish not on someone else pushing you for that actually these are uh, most of the uh, very key advantages what i see as a web 3.0 uh, users you will have in future some of some of the sites as i mentioned you will very much show these uh, see these uh, advantages when you log into these sites however as i mentioned just sip the water as i mentioned anything comes with a great benefit you will have a, some kind of a disadvantages also associated with that let's see some of uh disadvantages or cons of web 3.0 ownership is one of the disadvantage how we see because you have to have a different entity different nodes and all so you have to give a trust you have to trust other uh, entities and there is no centrally governed uh, layer which is managing this you as an individual you as a company has to do this actually so there is a lot more uh risks involved when you share or when you create ownership or trust between these and two entities which is hosting the website okay and regulation and cyber crime as i mentioned i don't need to register to web3.0 as a satish deshpande i can be very well registered as a table.chair i'm just telling you the example so tracing back the traceability of who is this user if he has done something wrong how to find out this particular user will become really really complex right now itself with all this traceability itself there is a lot more uh, hackers and illegal activities goes on in the net world actually with being anonymous you can imagine there may be more such instance will start getting reported i know blockchain is very safe technology and blockchain if you try to do hamper tamper update anything so you will lose entire track of the uh, information chain that's all true actually but still there may be some smart way of if anything which we develop is a crackable so if they also cyber criminals if they find out some way to break this and start controlling these entities will make the users and the company's life very very risky okay and there is no centralized regulation so that is another risk actually because no one need to adhere to anything i am free bird i can do whatever i want in web3.0 so mentality has to be very very focused here and has to be just for a good will and for a best use of a mankind if really it should not be for other things and the next problem we will have is up so uh, i mean resource upscaling when i say resource upscaling for example for all this web 2.0 we might have had a cloud we might have had a data center we might have had some kind of a server for all this information hosted in the these websites are hosted this the same platform may not be usable for the web 3.0 applications actually all these cloud providers and other data center management all these things they have to come out with their own specific set of uh, blockchain compliance resources actually so that means something which you are already invested has to be upscaled and there is a cost involved this is uh, one of the disadvantage is what i see because you have to upgrade to the new system and obviously wherever there is a new system upgrade is involved that it is not only cost there are risks also data loss network loss how exactly you make it yeah there are uh, risk involved and this becomes one of the disadvantages and uh, websites and companies also they have to upgrade their 
e-commerce folder, they have to upgrade uh, their business to be in compliance to 3.0. That brings in another, uh, that brings in not only the cost involved, that also will have a schedule also goes for uh, TOS because something you were releasing every month currently, when you move to web 3.0, you have to first move to web 3.0, there is a effort involved. Then you have to see how exactly the new cycles to be set. And this involves time and energy, this involves cost also. And security is one of the major concern um, because you own your own uh, websites, you own, you will have a trust with other uh, nodes, other users and all. So how you trust? Because if he registered with, uh, as I said, table chair, and you don't know whom you are giving a trust access to, actually, that becomes a very, very tricky. Uh, but most of these are getting at test. People know this, companies know this. So we are working, I mean, there's a community which is working on this. You can't just, because of these few disadvantage, we can't stop thinking about Web3.0. Wherever there is a problem, there is a solution. And solution, we as a community, we have to see how exactly we start thinking. And this four days workshop, whatever we have, I mean, blockchain days, possibly will throw some light on such topics, how exactly the problem was with the, some specific set of users, how it is overcome. There may be some discussions. We have to see how exactly it is uh, comes in next three, four days. And not only here, globally also, there is a lot more R&D, no addition, and there is uh, ongoing uh, uh, discussions are going on to fix some of the risks observed or identified in the Web3.0. So hopefully we will have, um, yeah, th this is a one of the reason actually, you don't see everything is not migrated to Web3.0. As most of you know, there are so many best, best advantages of Web 3.0. You might have a question, why it is not, why we are not moving from Web 2.0 to 3 because of these risks associated. And they are somehow holding us to think about before taking the next step. Okay, uh, that's about my presentation today. Uh, hope. I try to explain you from the basics until the intermediate, and you will have some of these topics discussed in detail in upcoming sessions. Please do attend. Please do uh, get, get, collate, collate as much information as possible about blockchain and in and around technologies, actually. And obviously, as uh, uh, you are aware, you will have NFTs as a gift and collect, collect as much as NFT is possible. Over to you for any questions. Hope we are in thin time. Fantastic. We have time Satish, for the questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was awesome. Now okay. I can explain even my daughter what is the difference between Web uh, 1.0 and Web 3.0. And by the way, uh, Satish, yeah. Uh, as far as I know, you have a birthday today. Am I right? Correct. <laughs> it's my okay, birthday. Okay, cool. So, on behalf of the team and on behalf of the audience, I'd like to say happy birthday to you and wish all the best. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's a great day to share the information, knowledge among the EPAM community. I'm really thrilled. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And Deep, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I have uh, some technical issues. I can't, you know, refresh my Q&A section. Uh, could you uh, assist me if you have a question to ask, Satish? Sure, I'll just go through a few questions. I don't know, I can't update it. I will chat on my uh, second device. Yeah, even I can't do that. Maybe I can read those, read all your questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. One of them was about security of the blockchain yeah. and the blockchain application base. I think you touched based upon that. Yes. But maybe if we can, yeah. Like, for example, if any of the sites we have access is compromised, right? Because we are mm -hmm. doing SSO for all the sites. Yeah. So whether those logins will be compromised or not, if you can touch base on that. 
Yes, okay. Security is one of the concern actually, which is, I think, mostly getting discussed in almost all the blockchain um, initiatives. Uh, because here, so what happens is, um, as I said, user can register as anything, anything, whatever comes into mind. So real identity is really hidden. Okay, this was a, a, one of the difficulty we saw in Web 2.0 because uh, we have seen actually, if you remember, Facebook have more than uh, user base than real uh, the population of the world actually. How is that? Because multiple people are creating multiple accounts actually. And one account may be used for real human interaction and the second and third may be used for wrong reasons actually so that that's that uh, that has become one of the critical factor identifying i mean tracing back to the person or uh, identity or the company who's doing this is one of the key aspect and that aspect is going to be missed here by anomalizing who's using or who's creating these websites or who's providing the access to uh, your uh, networks. All these things are totally hidden in web3.0, but hopefully we will have a, some kind of a solution on this in coming days. And uh, really looking forward, even I'm worried as a web3.0 user, one of the major worry I have is security. Okay, so, but don't worry, we'll have something very soon from the community. Hope it answers. Any other questions? Yeah, thank you so much, Satish, for that. Yeah, it was beautifully answered. Another session uh, talking was more about like the security of blockchain, right? And it's most yeah. in most cases is some form of public key cryptography, right? Yes. So how this uh, public key cryptography and and the creating the DIDs or the security ID is important. It, if can somebody can break this? Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> I don't say it never broken. It's broken some time ago. And, um, but interestingly, who did this is identified within a few days time and all the crypto, it is happening mostly in crypto. That's what I read about. So all the cryptocurrency they acquired is reversed actually. Uh, yes, blockchain is a very much tampered through technology. You can't just play around with that that easily. It is literally extremely difficult. But any technology, it's human built. So there may be some loopholes where uh, players, I mean, some wrong guys, long entities will try to handle such things. Uh, one of the brilliant techno the feature of uh, the blockchain is it disconnects the next set of connections itself when you try to even update a block by having the new uh, QR code, the, the hash code. So we are hoping, we are hoping, uh, we will build in more security in and around that. It's a 98% secure is what the community uh, says, or at least 95 and 95 plus. So, but yes, there are some loopholes. Um, we are working. Let's see how it is, how it goes. We as a community, not as EPM, okay? So I'm talking about the blockchain community users yeah. across the world. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. I think we are, uh, yeah, we have almost answered all the questions which yeah. are pertinent. And a uh, yeah. few of them asking, uh, uh, what do you think about Web5? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's too Yeah. So no, no, I don't want to say anything about it because um, I have my own uh, questions and thesis going on on this type topic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit, I mean, really futuristic, but yeah, it's it's very good. But you can message me individually. We can have a quick chat, but not in this forum, please. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done for now. Dennis, Satish, you want to, uh, Dennis, you want to give a closing comment? Yeah, I, I'd like to thank, thank you very much for Satish for his 
you know, awesome presentation. It was, you know, very many insights for me at least in this presentation. And thank you, Satish, thank you. one more time. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, wish you all the audience have a great learning uh, week this week. Looking forward to see you. And uh, I'm in EPAM, so you can message me anytime for any questions. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Sure, thanks. Sure. Thank, thank you so you. much, Satish, for your time. Thank you. Thank it you. It was guys. wonderful talking bye -bye. to you. Happy birthday. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.